my name is Rue, this is Rue Be Creative. Today I'm showing you how I made this, my Nordic War Axe from Skyrim. If you want to have a go and make your own, I've made a pattern that I'm going to leave in the description below and you're more than welcome to have that and use it to make your own axe. If you have any comments then again please leave them down below and I really really hope you enjoy my video. Thank you for tuning in! I began by drawing out a pattern on Photoshop using the pen tool. I scaled it to the right size based on a character holding it in the game. I then printed the pattern out onto A4 paper, taped it together and cut it out with a pair of scissors. I took some 20mm PVC pipe, cut it to the size of the pattern, before using a heat gun to shape the end into the shape of the pattern. With the base done, I cut the pattern into three pieces that I'd be working with. The base, the main axe head and the top bit. I decided to start the main axe head. For the axe head, I used three different thicknesses of foam, 2mm, 5mm and 10mm. I drew the pattern out twice onto each of the different thicknesses. The two 10mm pieces will be the centre, the 5mm pieces will sandwich either side and then the 2mm foam will be used for the detailing. When cutting out the pattern, make sure to use a sharp craft knife. Once all the pieces had been cut out, I began by gluing together the two 10mm pieces of foam. With the two pieces together, I lined up the pattern and marked where the handle sits. In that space, I then put the PVC pipe and marked the pipe's thickness. Using a sharp craft knife, I then cut out the thickness of the pipe, leaving the 10mm foam in two separate pieces. To make sure that I was happy that this was going to fit together the way I wanted it to, I taped the 5mm pieces of foam to either side of the 10mm foam. I then slipped the PVC pipe through the hole and made sure that it looked alright. Once I was satisfied that it looked good, I glued the 5mm foam to either side of the 10mm foam. And just to double check, I slipped it onto the pipe again. Taking the 2mm foam, it's time to look at the details. Early on I decided that sticking the details on top would be much easier than carving into the foam. So taking the pattern, I cut it up into small pieces and traced each one onto the 2mm foam. For example, the line on the pattern that shows the blade was cut off, placed onto the pattern and drawn around. Start off with the larger bits and then keep cutting down until you have smaller and smaller pieces. If you end up needing another pattern, you can always print off a new one. After cutting out the pattern and tracing it onto 2mm foam, these are all the details you should have. Don't forget you need two of each piece, one for either side. I put most of the pieces to one side, except for the bit that shows the blade. This bit I used contact adhesive and glued it to the main axe head. With the axe head mostly prepped, I began work on the handle of the axe. I started off by using a tape measure to measure the circumference of the PVC pipe. I then cut a strip of 2mm craft foam with the measurements of 29cm by the circumference of the pipe. Using super glue, I stuck that strip to the pipe, making sure to try and smush the seams together so that they're less visible. I then added a second layer of 2mm foam. When cutting up the strip for the second piece, make sure you re-measure the circumference. At the top of the axe, there's a slight overhang. That's the bit I'm going to do next. Using the pattern, I marked the height of the overhang onto some 5mm foam. I then cut that piece off and rounded off the edges with a sharp craft knife. This is so that it would sit flush and go with the curve of the handle. Using the pattern, I then took the measurements from where the handle meets the base of the axe head all the way down to the bottom of the triangle detail. Taking that measurement, I then cut out a piece of 2mm craft foam with that measurement and the new circumference of the 2mm covered PVC pipe. Cutting up the pattern further, I removed the piece just below the overhang. Then using that piece, I marked the opening onto the 2mm foam. Cutting that off should leave you with a piece that looks like this. I then marked the centre point on the little foam rectangle and glued one of the sides along the centre line. I then glued that to the handle. I then wrapped the 2mm foam around and met in the centre point. Then I gently pressed the already glued sides to the handle of the axe. This should leave your handle looking like this. With the handle done, I moved on to the top bit of the axe. This was made in pretty much the same way as the handle of the axe, with two pieces of 2mm craft foam wrapped around the PVC pipe and then a little overhang at the top. Make sure to really smush those seams together, you don't want them visible. 
To make the overhang, I took some 5mm craft foam and drew a little curve on it, and using a craft knife I cut it out. To do the opening below the overhang, I again used the pattern and marked the curve. This time I did the opening in the very centre of the foam. I then used a sharp craft knife and cut it out. These are what the three pieces should look like individually. I then glued all the components together. This is what your act should look like at this point. I then began work on the triangle detail on the handle of the axe. I started by marking the centre point along the handle. Using 2mm foam, I made a triangle with a height of 9cm and a base of 15cm. Then, with a piece cut straight off the pattern, I drew the wiggly base. And using a pair of scissors, I cut it off. Then copying the details straight from the pattern, I cut out the holes. Finally, I glued it on, making sure to line up the tip of the triangle with the centre line on the handle. To glue on the triangle, I just used super glue. To make the triangle look like it was moulded to the handle, I went around the edge with craft clay. Sticking with the craft clay, I went and filled in all the other holes on the project, including on the top and on the handle. I then went to the very base of the handle, covered it in craft clay and moulded the pommel. Whilst that was drying, I began carving the blade of the axe. I first carved the bevelled edge with a sharp blade, before using a dremel tool to neaten it up. I also went round the edges to make sure they lined up too. I also dremeled and sanded down the side of the axe by a few millimetres. This was so that the head of the axe would be slightly larger where the blade was and slightly smaller at the main body. However, as you can see, I've left a bit of height where the handle goes through. This is to make it look like the handle is continuously travelling through the head of the axe. Whilst I had the dremel out, I also carved the angle on the top bit. After sanding and dremeling, I glued on the rest of the details. Lastly, I made wraps for the handle. I cut two strips about the width of a ruler, then I scrunched them into little balls in my hand. This gave the foam lots of creases and wrinkles. Using a craft knife, I cut and scored holes into the foam. Then I heated it with a heat gun to make the holes larger. This happens because as you heat it, the foam shrinks a little bit, making the holes and scratches bigger. Using super glue, I then wound and glued the wraps to the handle. At this point, I glued all the components to the handle. And this is the fully crafted axe before painting. I decided to try priming the axe with latex, which is something I've never done before. Some areas of the axe turned out beautifully smooth, while other areas had little lumps in them, so I wasn't so keen on the latex primer. I started doing a black base primer, but halfway through I realised I didn't like the finish and changed my mind and painted it white. This is the fully primed axe. I actually kind of liked it this way and nearly decided not to paint it any further. Getting out my airbrush, I then sprayed all the details black. I soon realised that this would be pointless, as when I went over with silver, it covered all the black anyway. For the silvers, I used gunmetal grey as a base and chrome for the highlights. Since the previous black that I'd done was now covered by the silver paint, I went in with a brush and hand painted the black on. For the handle, I painted the base black, and then I did the wraps in a series of blacks, browns and green washes. To make the axe look more worn and used, I went over the top with a really watery brown paint. This stuck in all the grooves and creases and really made the axe look used. Using blue roll, I wiped away any excess paint. For the final finishing touch, I glued black faux fur to the handle. And this magnificent beauty is the finished product. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, then please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be leaving the links to the materials for this in the description below. I'm also going to leave the pattern down there as well if you want to try and make it yourself. Once again, thank you so much for watching my video and I really appreciate all the support that I've got. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.